Type 10 is the latest Japanese main battle tank. When it was first revealed, many thought of it to be the first 4th generation main battle tank, for whatever reason, and many went to say it's the best main battle tank yet. But Type 10 has many problems because the tank is meant to be as light as possible because of Japan's topography, the fact that Japan is basically an island which has other small islands under it, and many of the bridges don't support heavy vehicles. In this video, we will take a look at some of the problems of the tank, of course, this does not mean that the tank is bad, far from it, it's just the focus of the video. Many of its problems lie in the protection, because the tank is designed with the idea to preserve the weight as much as possible. The first issue we can talk about is the side protection. The hull has no additional armor modules on the sides, just simple side skirts. This is definitely not good for a modern tank. Most of the modern tanks have at least one third of the hull side protected with additional armor modules, be it composites or explosive reactive armor, and now more and more we see the entire sides covered with additional armor. Type 10, as I said, has none of that, and it drastically impacts its survivability, because even a hit from a 30 degrees by an old RPG rocket could prove fatal for the tank. Now, the turret is a hot topic. Some claim that the modules on the sides are composite armor modules, while some claim those modules are hollow and possibly serve only for storage, while offering only spaced armor protection. I personally could not find any hard evidence to support either of the two claims, but I will give my two cents on it. Personally, I do not believe that those are composite armor modules for several reasons. First reason is the weight. The tank weighs only 44 tons. In comparison, the original Leopard 2 from 1980 weighed 10 tons more than that, and the modern one weighs 20 tons more. Composite armor modules are really heavy. If those indeed are such modules, they would drastically increase the weight of the tank. Second reason is the fact that the modules have little doors with hinges on them. You don't put such things on composite armor modules, mainly because those could easily be damaged in combat by heavy machine gun fire or explosions. Third reason is their design. On one spot they are thin, on another really thick, and so on. You don't really design composite armor modules like this. At least not if you want them to work consistently. Another thing to also mention is that these boxes go along the entire turret, to the very back, where composite armor is not really needed. It would just be unnecessary weight. So I honestly believe those are not composite armor modules. Now, there are pictures of the tank with what appears to be composite armor on the sides of the turret, but without the boxes on the side. This led some to speculate that there is composite armor on the sides under the boxes, but if we carefully examine the photo, we will see that this is an old prototype. First, we can see that the supposed composite armor is as thick as the laser warning receiver and starts from the receiver's point and covers pretty much the entire side of the turret with the same thickness. But if we look at the actual tank, we see that the area behind the laser warning receiver is much thinner than what is shown on the picture, and the boxes create a slope which wouldn't allow a plate of such thickness behind them. In another picture from an actual tank, we can see that there is no such plate on the side. Now, does this mean Type 10 has just simple steel as side armor and storage boxes on top? Well, probably yes, but not necessarily. There is still room for a thinner composite plate behind the boxes on the gunner's side, and the commander's side could possibly have a thin composite area on the tank's actual turret, since there is some room there. Of course, composite armors of those thicknesses provide very minimal protection. They would maybe only stop old RPG rockets from 30 degree angle, if you're lucky. It is possible that Japanese designers thought that if composite will provide very little protection, why add it in the first place, in an attempt to preserve weight. And it is very much possible that it is just steel on the turret side. Now, the tank is said to receive a hard kill acro protection system, so that will save it from a lot of problems regarding its armor protection, but a powerful ATGM will still retain some penetration when intercepted by an APS, and having really poor side protection will be a problem. And that will not protect it against autocannon fire from infantry fighting vehicles, which are more than capable of penetrating its side armor. Next problem is the protection in the hull ammo storage. The Bustle Autoloader has only 14 rounds in it, which is kind of a problem on itself, but the rest of the ammunition, 21 pieces, are stored in the forward hull compartment next to the driver. This can lead to the catastrophic loss of a tank if the ammunition in this rack is hit. 
The fact that the lower front plate has no additional protection can also be the problem because of this, but the lower front plate is an area least likely to be hit, therefore it's understandable why it's designed in such a way. One redeeming factor could be the ammunition propellant. Germany switched to a propellant that does not catch fire when hit by hollow charge munitions, but I could not find any information if Japan adopted something similar. This does not mean that a hit to the ammo rack of one to knock out the tank, but it significantly decreases the chances of that happening. Another problem is that the turret ring is very exposed. If we look at the tank, we can see that the area between the gun mantlet and the upper front plate is much bigger than usual. The turret ring appears to be covered, but it's not actual armor. It appears to be mount for some electronics, could be driver's night vision, I could be wrong. And it's also covered by driver's periscopes, which obviously aren't armor. So a hit from anything will penetrate there and basically neutralize the tank, which is a really big problem. Of course, the tank has many good things about it, especially mobility-wise, but as I said at the beginning, this video is only about some of the problems of the tank. And as already mentioned, most of these problems have to do with the fact that the tank has to be light. That was the main goal of the design, and they did accomplish it. That would be all, if you like my content you can consider supporting me on Patreon, or leave a like on the video or sub to the channel if you are new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.